What's up guys, Blade Master here. Ooh, someone was gonna start the intro before me. <laughs> Blade Master here with Maximus Decimus Meridius. Hey dude. Hello. Uh, we are gonna be showing you a couple of uh, games that we played against each other, which were really interesting between Empires of Sand DLC factions. Um, what have you picked in this game? Uh, in this game I picked uh, Axum because I haven't tried them before. And I have taken the Tano Kids as usual. Tano Kids, I like the uh, pronunciation there. <laughs> For once you have the edge in pronouncing things. Agatursi, Agatursi. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, so um, you, why don't you go over Axum first? Okay, I brought two Desert Mountain Skirmishers. I love me some extra cav, and these guys will be very important in doing what they're doing now. Doing damage to shock cab, doing damage to shock infantry. I also have some hurlers, speed bumps, able to do some damage to light the armored troops. Then I have my six armored camel warriors, so no shock cavalry in this battle. I want my cavals to go in and stay in the fight for a long time. Uh, in support, I have Spice Guard, Afar Raid Masters, Spice Guard, Afar Raid Masters. So I only have four decent infantry units, then I have two desert spears up front to act as sort of a deterrent from the frontal cab yolo. Right, and also if I brought any skirmishers, they would do brilliantly with that 70 missile block chance. Yes, definitely. So, so this, yeah, this uh, the distance here means that my cavalry is basically safe from skirmish. Yeah. So for me, I have brought three desert pikes, as you can see, I have uh, popped uh, rapid advance so, they, so that they can close the distance. I find them very useful for that aspect. I've got a couple of desert hurlers behind them and a desert hurler on my right flank. I've got a ca armored camel warrior on each flank with two Mavius charges be, uh, flanking them. Uh, I've got a total of three Tanukid ambushers and three Kushite sh Shotelai. And um, already the armored camel warriors engaging with each other. Mavius charges charging into uh, very slowly charging into the uh, desert hurler here. So my, uh, my Tanukid army is basically meant just plain rushing. Um, what about yours? It's pretty interesting here. Yeah, it's, it's not meant to be a rush army. It's meant to be an army that pulls you in, like this engagement over here. Not the best engagement for me, but it's meant to be an army that pulls you in and then grinds you down in mm -hmm. a long, prolonged melee. Because the Spice Guard have... especially will be able to demolish Definitely. my guys. Definitely. If I'm able to, like this is the plan here. Armored Camel Warriors take on the Shock uh, Cavalry. But then the spice guard go in and support where they can to stop them from getting charged by said shock cavalry. Wow, the Mavius so charges didn't Mavius. do a single, uh, didn't get a single kill on the armored camel warriors. Yeah, and now they run into the spice guard, get some spice guard off the field, but Mavius chargers are off now. Yeah, and the camels can turn around and go into the desert palatina defectors. I'm actually pretty surprised that the armored camel warriors didn't take a single casualty. I mean, these guys have really good charge bonus, twenty bonus versus cav. Like, I didn't, I don't really get that. Yep. Well, but, I mean, it's uh, with 60 armor, 337 health, there is a chance of that happening. Right, right. Of not right. getting anything done on the charge. Just taking major HP damage, but crucially not losing a single cavalry unit. Yeah. Uh, Spice Guard getting rear charged here, and uh, all across the field, the Desert Pikes doing decently against the Desert Spears. It looks like getting 77 kills. Uh, your yeah. armored cavalry warrior is about to engage with my camels, but I pulled them back purposely so that you can get some camels stuck on the pikes. Um, and then I'm ca coming in with my Tanukid ambushers to help out. So the center looks like... Oh, the pikes moved. The pikes moved just before the camels hit. Ooh, so the pikes weren't down. Ah, damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, Almost. there goes that Almost. plan. <laughs> yeah. uh, but Tanukid ambush, Kushai Shotlai uh, helping out against those armored camel warriors because my, my Mavius charges looks like they're going to need as much help as they can get. Um, I've already lost, crucially, I've lost a lot of cavalry. Uh, especially on my left flank, where honestly I thought that it, I was getting the better of that engagement. But uh, crucially, I've also killed off a lot of the armored camel warriors here. Um, yeah. And it looks like you're getting a sneaky rear charge with your armored camels against my Mavia's bodyguard. This is uh, another, I don't, uh, this general is actually pretty good actually, because they're oh, very yeah. heavy. Uh, don't have the greatest charge bonus or whatever, but I, they'll stay in a fight. They've got decent health too, I think. Yeah, 299 health, not bad. Yeah, he didn't really lose anything from that, and my yeah. camels are just going to break. And uh, center, your armored camel warrior is taking the worst of that engagement again, presumably because of my Tanukid ambushers. Yep. And here, the problem with the Tanukid ambushers comes into play here. Their poor armor, poor health means that they're just not going to uh, last in, a, in any sort of melee engagement. Um, 
but this let's see I've, I've popped frenzy charge here against your uh, Afar raid masters uh, they should do a very good job against the raid masters yeah but honestly it doesn't look like they're uh, getting too many kills it's weird a frenzy charge all kind of bugs out a lot of in my opinion. Yeah, it needs to be it needs to be popped a lot earlier than you would think in yeah. order for it not to just because stop they the kind charge. of stop they stop once yeah. you pop <laughs> they stop once you pop. Um, yep. Spice guard here, eighty kills on uh, my right flank. No, I haven't taken any casualties really, uh, and destroyed my Kushite short line and uh, another unit. Um, here, Mavius charges. Ooh, the lag. Uh, Mavius charges going to charge into Spice guard. What have you popped here? Frenzy. Okay, smart smart decision. They're dropping, but my Mavius charges are do dropping much quicker than them. Yeah. Uh, but here I'm trying to showcase the the quickness of the Mavius charges when it comes to pulling out. Uh, they charge in to the Afar Raid Masters, able to pull out very quickly, hardly taking any casualties. So in that sense, it's a, it's a pretty unique little uh, unit to have, which is really why I like Thunder Kids. Yeah. They're very nice for that, but they are they suffer from morale problems. Like they routed just because they saw camels here. Yeah. And uh, that is a problem. And if it's, uh, if it's a problem across all the dozen factions, I think most if, of the mid-tier cavalry has morale problems. Exactly, and if it's if it's not the morale problems, it's the uh, is the fact that they have really piss poor health. Uh, the yeah. fact that they have frenzy charge helps their morale a little bit because it gives them unbreakable. So you can see this uh, little engagement over yeah. here. I've popped frenzy charge, so they're not going to route instantly. They'll actually fight to the last man there, which is pretty useful because you can see the armored camel. Warriors Extremely actually, useful. Yeah, they've actually broken there. And they're not, I mean, they, they don't have any abilities to keep them in the fight for longer. Yeah. So even though they were winning, they route for because reasons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mavia's bodyguard here getting into the thick of things, but uh, the, that's not an engagement they really want to have happen because the Desert Spears here coming into support. You popped steady on these guys. They, I didn't know they had steady. It's pretty strange. Yep. Aren't they the cheapest spear unit in, uh, for the uh, Arabs? They, yeah, very cheap. Oh, not the cheapest, but they are among the cheapest. Oh yeah, the Desert Levy, right? Desert Levy are yeah. probably the cheapest. Right. So, all in all, you're keeping like... This is a very similar strategy to what you did in the 2v2 with Indy Prime yep. and Oakley. Keeping cavalry in reserve, basically forcing a second engagement in the battle. And here in Spice Guard, getting great shots on my Mavia's bodyguard with their... Um, are you using Flaming Shot here? Heavier. Heavy, okay. Because uh, it does more AP damage. Uh, heavy Shot only has the bonus, whereas the AP from the Heavy Shot... I find it more useful against Cam now. Really? Yeah. Have you, have you tested it out? Yeah, it, it does. It deals the damage. Really? And the thing is, if you, if you also hit... Like in these messy engagements, if you also hit infantry, it's going to damage that infantry more. Right. So charging in with your desert warlord here, they've done okay. They've got 107 kills. Um, did you pop uh, experience upgrades on them before the game? Uh, I don't remember actually. I usually do, so I think I had two on them. Right. Well, either way, desert warlord is a very nice, uh, nice general. Very good uh, general. And uh, here's the problem with melee infantry. We have a Kushat Shotelai being charged by uh, 28 camels, and the unit just instantly drops down to. 90 man. Yeah. Coming in with Tanukid ambushes with Frenzy Charge, I think. Yeah, Frenzy Charge. No, just regular Frenzy. Because they didn't have Frenzy Charge on. I think Frenzy Charge gives you a pretty great uh, acceleration bonus. Yeah. Yeah. Plus 20%. 20, 20 so, honestly, I thought if I could use that, then I could catch the Armored Camel Warriors. Very possibly could have. But they didn't have that. So, I can't. And now they're, those guys are basically dead from the uh, Desert Hurlers. Yeah. So, I mean. Always nice to have Skirmish late in. It, uh, it, this game, there's very little chance that you can lose this game. I'm out of cavalry. Um, again, proving the in extreme glass cannon nature of uh, a Mavia army. Uh, the Thanu kids can bring a pretty st like strong, sturdy army if you just bring a lot of camel armor, camel warriors, and Kushat Shotlai. But yeah. you can also go crazy and go with the Mavia, Mavia spam. But it's very risky. It's very risky, and honestly, most of the time it just won't pay dividends. Yeah, it was one of the things that makes the uh, one of the things that makes the Sassanid shock so great, and one of the things that makes the Himyar shock so great is that they just do not care about slingers whatsoever. Yeah. Whereas the Mavia will die. Well, <laughs> that's the it's the opposite for the Mavia. They have yeah, just exactly. such bad armor and no missile block chance too. So valiant defeat. Um, I'm going to keep trying with the Tanu. I'm going to call this the Tanu Clicks army because you just need a lot of clicks to to try and win you the game. You need to out micro your opponent. Most definitely. 
So that was kind of what I wanted to have here. I just wanted to be able to send in the cavalry, trust that they were able to hold, and then be able to micro my infantry. Um, because the thing with pikes is that once you have pikes on the field, you create a, a micro nightmare for yourself. Hmm. But the thing is, I mean, like, I understand what you're saying, but also it allowed me to... It, I think it's very important for the Tano kids because it allows you to keep your cavalry really far away from enemies, from enemy hurlers. Yeah. While also having, like, a mainline threat because these guys, the Tano kid pikes with rapid advance, just charge them into uh, slingers if the, if your opponent is not looking. They will they will kill them off very, very easily. Oh, yeah, slingers. Not take any that's damage. the one unit they can defeat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's honestly perfect because these guys are cheap, they're quick, excellent missile block chance, not really much more that you can really expect from them. Much better than yeah. other pikes, which is why I like to bring them. Yeah, the, the, the rapid advance really, really helps. Yeah. And um, the, the battle, for me, it kind of... I wanted it to go that way too, but I just didn't expect the Mavius charges to get so slaughtered by by armored camel warriors. I, I expected them yeah. to do better. Yeah, um, I, the camel warriors do a horrible job against good high armor shock cavalry, but against against um, lighter shock cavalry with with next to no armor, they yeah. do very very well. But but the the armored camel warriors aren't even that good. They're not. They're not a great cavalry unit, I think. Mm -hmm. So mainly because the, a lot of the time, sure they have higher health, but they won't be able to stay in the fight for long due to the morale problems. True. Maybe using, but the problem with uh, using a rally general is because is the morale buff that you get from that is just nothing. Yeah, um, much brace all day every day. Yeah. Um, that nine bonus versus cav is just super useful, and even when you have mixed engagements with like you have a few depleted hurler units, you have some infantry in there, and when every single guy has a nine bonus versus cavalry, that starts to add up. Yeah. Um, so we saw some really poor shock cavalry here in the Mavias. Let's see. I, I think you are going to bring Tanukids in the next um, the next battle. So let's see how well I do yes, against I them. All right. Strength and honor. See you guys for our next game. Peace.